Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? It's a lovely day in paradise. The 11th of October, still very sort of quite, you know, warm. Expected to be around 15 degrees for the foreseeable future. So no one's really got their heating on. Uh, which is uh, just as well because I've run out of fuel oil, so I can't put my heating on. I had to uh, run out of oil because I'm having a new tank commissioned and then the chap told me that uh, the uh, it didn't matter because he can pump all the oil from the old tank to the new tank and in fact he needs some oil to commission the new tank and so now I've got to order some oil in the old tank and then when I've done that I'll have to order some new oil in the new tank and oh it's all a big faff and not as big a faff as paying for it. I mean, I actually came across a business that doesn't take cards. And I'm increasingly coming across businesses that don't take cards. And I honestly thought that more and more people would take cards as time went by, you know. this The case for taking cards, I mean, I didn't take cards for a while. But once you you change and you do, you don't ever go back, you don't get rid of it. And that's because most people pay for everything today on a card. They do. I mean, let's put it this way. We're our checkup, right? Nobody carries 60 pounds of cash. I'm not saying ne ne nobody ever pays in cash. I mean, like one or two patients a year might pay with cash, but mostly they just get the card out and stick it on the card. And then you've got the other patients who you tell them that they need uh, three or 5,000 pounds worth of bridge work or something and uh, and they may not have that lying around in their bank account just waiting for you to tell them that they need a bridge so they will put that on a card and then it gives them the option of paying it off over the maximum period allowed or over you know splitting it just over three months or something like that and their option is to either wait to save up for three months and then come in and have it done by which time you know, that's not satisfactory because the whole job's had to go on hold for three months. Your cash flow's had to wait for three months. They they want the work done. They may not work, want the work done in three months. They might decide, or something else may come up. You know, they may find that their flat roof's leaking in two months, and and so the cash for your bridge is going to get will, will go on the new flat roof. So, taking cards is a bit of a no-brainer in my opinion. It doesn't really matter. You know, you, I know the, uh, the machine rental is where they get you, and they sign you up to a five-year contract, um, which is, uh, you know, it's, it's outrageous, really. Although you can, I think, I don't know whether you can break it. I think you have to pay them the five-year rental if you break it. But anyway, there are there are new companies like uh, Circle and Square coming into this business, American companies, where there's no terminal rental, and you only have to give them like a month's notice. So this competition is coming into merchant services slowly and compliance is not a problem because all you have to do is uh, do the self certificate you know it takes a, it's a bit of a pain in the ass it's about 20 pages long but once you get the right certificate once you get the right form you just fill it in and you say yeah you know we do do we take money over the phone no we don't retain the uh, the three digits on the back um, you know, and we've only got one machine and, and no data is stored on site with regard to credit card transactions. Then you can just, you just put that in and that, that's entirely free. There's no charge to submitting your, you know, it's not like the bloody CQC. You charge you 800 quid a year for self-certifying. So. And there's a few other advantages. I mean, people will, if it's on the marginal, you know, if it's on the edge of their financial capabilities, then they might well decide to have it done if they can stick it on a card, whereas they won't have it done if they can't. Anyway, this this company just doesn't take cards. And so I said, look, you know, you're being a bit silly here not taking cards. It would have cost me 40 pence to pay with my Visa debit and, uh, and uh, and they said, well, you know, we take we take cash, we take check, we take uh, bank transfer, which is fine. I mean, if you've got a ton of cash that 
you you want to sort of just hide or get rid of, then which I don't, then it's nice for them that they take cash. If they otherwise, they just assume it's in your bank account. If it's not in your bank account, then you know she says it's free. You know, bank transfer is free. Uh, check is free and cash is free so I don't know why you want to sort of be asking me if we take cards where where we'd all have to start paying money and uh, the answer to that is that if, if the money's not in your bank account then it's not free for you is it if you had you pay for something where the company won't take cards if you want to pay for it on a card you know you have to pay something like two pound fifty plus three percent to draw it out just to pay them in cash or just to you know put it in your bank account and then and pay it by a bank transfer plus you don't get the guarantee if you uh, pay for something expensive on a credit card then the credit card company is jointly liable in the case of uh, any you know uh, problem default or infraction of the law and uh, most of the time they will just uh, they you know so you've got some sort of insurance Anyway, the moral of the story is, if you don't take credit cards, you really well should. Okay, because I know it's a bit of a pain and you start, you start thinking, oh, well, I'm, I'm turning over £200,000 a year and if it all starts going on credit cards and then that's 3% they're going to charge me and uh, X pound for every blooming transaction and so I'm going to lose about £6,000 a year. Well, you won't because well, you'll start turning over £300,000 a year. And people are start have a gasp of relief and say, "Oh, thank you know, thank goodness that old so and so's got him dragged himself into the 1990s and finally started accepting credit cards." And there's tons of people out there with all sorts of cards that are looking to use them to spend money at various businesses, and uh, they're not going to do it at your business if you don't, you know, you insist on who takes a check anymore? Who takes checks? I mean, I paid the lab with a check because we wanted to delay just for a couple of days. We had a, we've had an implantologist leave the practice. And when you have an implantologist leave the practice, you have a massive cash flow boost. When, when they join, you have a boost. And when they leave, you have a massive cash flow deficit. So we wanted, to, so what's happened He's for the last three months, he's had no income from him and we've been left to pick up these massive lab bills. So what we did was we wanted to delay the paying the lab bill for two days, I think, or something, until we got we could clear some more money into the account. So we paid by cheque, and it's a brilliant system, I tell you. I suppose the only reason why, and it's the only cheque I think we've written for two years, and it still hasn't been cashed. People are just so slow. And it's, it's true, I had a, I sold a bit of land for about two and a half thousand and the solicitor paid me with a cheque. And he paid me, and he paid, he made it out to uh, the joint, uh, a joint account that didn't exist because my wife and I are joint owners of the house. And uh, so he made the cheque out to Mr. and Mrs. Angry. And I had to send it back to him and say that this, you know, the bank, because first of all, we tried to pay it in the bank, didn't we? And then the bank said, no, I'm sorry, you can't pay that into your single person account because it's in two names and uh, so then I had then had to send it back and say to him look can you then just transfer it into this single account I mean that must, he must have had that two and a half thousand pound in his client account for about a month because of the uh, hoo-ha with checks and I can see why you know they knocked him on the head really because they are the most ridiculously slow way to pay and uh, although I've been on the beneficial side of that for, for, with the with the lab, but now um, we're getting annoyed because he hasn't he hasn't cashed it, and the receptionist keeps moaning at me because she can't she can't tell me what's exactly in the bank account because uh, she they haven't cashed the cheque yet. Although I mean, don't see why she can't. I'm just deducting, you know. That's what I would do. But no, it's annoying her. You know, it's annoying her. And talking of annoying things, oh, I've just had. I've had so many lunatics in, you know, so many lunatics in. I've had, yesterday I had someone who cancelled a crown prep at short notice. And she, she emailed us at 7 o'clock in the morning, so she wasn't coming in for her crown prep in the afternoon. And, um, you know, we, we have a policy that the risk 
of a cancellation at short notice is borne by the patient. It's borne by us up to 24 hours, but uh, uh, less than 24 hours, the risk then is borne by the patient because the uh, uh, because we are unable to mitigate our loss at, at such short notice by um, rebooking the time that's you know that's wasted. Anyway, we put this in every single communication, in every single quotation, every single email has it in the footer, but the patients still don't, they won't accept that, you know, they just don't accept it. They, <laughs> they still think that if they're, if they're sick or something, then we should bear the loss. And they just don't understand the concept of them ensuring their own loss under those circumstances. So... You know, and I've had to I had to have a stern chat with the staff yesterday because so even my own staff don't understand the system. And I, it's not that I haven't explained it before. I've explained it many times before. When they were like, "Oh, well, I do think she is genuinely ill," and I said, "Yeah, that's fine. I am sorry that I she is genuinely ill. I am genuinely sorry that she is ill. However, you know, if she had booked a hotel with a no refund policy or um, an air, an air, a flight with a you know a no refund policy, and had it been just as sick or even twice as sick, then she would have lost that money. She she would have had the choice between going on holiday or uh, going to the hotel or, the, or or on the flight or missing it and and foregoing the money that she'd spent and I think it's partly our problem because these people who have these policies always charge in advance I suppose that's that's our policy that's our problem do you know what I mean we always or do they have your credit card I don't know I'll have to look into it but I mean really you can't you know you have to accept that policy because uh, it can be enforced against you whereas with us we don't we only charge if they turn up and if they don't turn up they think well try and charge me now and so, of course, and we can't, you know, unless they paid a deposit. So, um, we try to get in. I mean, what we do is, we we ring the patients up and we say, look, this is how the policy is that you're going to get charged whether you turn up or not, because today, because you've cancelled at less than 24 hours' notice. So, what we're going to do, we're going to give you the opportunity to either change your mind and come in and avoid a charge. And this sometimes works when someone's like being called away to work and, and, and then they have to ring up work and say, look, I'm sorry, if I come into work, I'm going to lose 500 quid because that's what I, you know, I'm going to get charged for not having a crown. Or, um, you know, if it's as long as you come in and get the work done today, at any point, even if it's inconvenient to come in at 11 o'clock, we'll fit you in at half past four. And as long as we can still do the work, then you don't get charged. And in most cases, that produces a sort of, uh, oh, uh, oh, well, if that's the case, then I'll probably I'll just still come in, you know? I mean, we have one case where someone was genuinely sick. And we said to them that they'll get charged if they don't, and you know, if they don't come in. And they came in and they were like, to show us that they were literally sick. Sat in the waiting room and they weren't well. And that was, you know... But they did that more to make a point, you know, <laughs> just really, just to, 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 to struggle. And it wasn't a crown or anything. I mean, it was a filling us. It was something, you know, reasonably minor. And to, I mean, and who struggles all the way into a dentist to sit and sort of start puking up in the waiting room just to make a point about a, a dental charge that's probably, you know, just a few quid. <sighs> so anyway, I mean, I had to decide what to do about it, and this um, there were there were some there were other warning signals to do with this woman, you know, other behavioural issues, you know, things like um, smelling of um, smelling of drink on occasions and things like that. So, um, so we said what we did was, which brings me to another subject, which is how do you gracefully get rid of people? You know, what's the what's the best form of words? And what we do is we just write them a letter saying that. Uh, Due to uh, you know this fundamental disagreement on factor X, Y, and Z, um, that uh, you should make alternative arrangements for your treatment in future. 
we don't say he'd never come back, but we just say, you know, please, please make alternative arrangements in future. And uh, that's what it, uh, that's the letter you get if you're chucked out of your dentist, the alternative arrangements letter. And so we sent, and we thought long and hard about this because to be honest with you, you know, we could, nobody wants to lose a patient. Everybody could do with the money. Um, we could probably squeeze her in somewhere else. And, uh, but it was more, it was more fundamental than that. It wasn't, it wasn't just about the fact that she hadn't come in. It was about the fact that we couldn't contact her in the morning and the receptionist said that she suspects it's because she'd gone to work. And so therefore we've got, you know, there's a reasonable suspicion that she's not as, the sickness is not the problem. And, you know, it almost is never the problem. It's usually uh, lack of funds or them chickening out of what they see as quite a difficult procedure for them at the last minute. And you have to enforce these things because you have to have some sort of policy to prevent people from being, um, how can I put it, you know, save people from themselves. Because let's face it, you know, you wake up in the morning and it's a Tuesday morning and, and you've got to spend 500 quid at the dentist in the afternoon. Now, who wants to do that? Who wants to do that? No, I mean, you do that because it's necessary, you have to, you need to, you want to, but nobody's going to be happy about it. So, so the temptation is always, as soon as you wake up, which is as soon as she emailed us at 7 o'clock, just bang off a quick email and say, oh, it's not today, not today. And there's, there's a thousand reasons why you can convince yourself that today is not the right day, the exactly right day to do it, you know? So then she banged us off an email and said, look, not tonight, Josephine, and then went off to work, where we then couldn't contact her. So, and, and the excuse they use is always illness because they think, well, how can they argue with illness? And what they're doing with illness is they're trying to um, offset the blame you know the the reason what they're saying is I'm not coming in but not because not because I don't want to I'd love to personally if it was down to me I'd be in like a shot but these bacteria this virus he's telling me no you know it's a third party this third party stopping me coming in and you can't argue with it I mean I'm doing my best here you know or you can't ask me to do more than my best but I've been laid low so so really for you to insist that I come in is unreasonable because this is outside of my control, you know, circumstances out, force majeure. And, uh, you know, and this is where the, the staff were going, right? The staff were going, oh dear, what a shame. Oh, what a shame. You know, so, so sorry, because they're trained to not be empathetic and say, oh, I'm so sorry to hear, blah, 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 you know. And uh, yes, 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 don't, and oh, I'll ring you in a few days. Okay, yes, you ring us when you feel better. You know, no, no, you know, no, these people, they find that uh, there's certain characteristics of these sort of engagements. One is that uh, all the phone doesn't work until such point as they can't come in. So in other words, you know, someone just doesn't turn up and, and, and you ring up and his wife says, oh yeah, he's working, he's working on the rigs in Siberia. And you're like, really? Okay, so, and his phone, you know, nobody's able to tell you that they're not coming in until the minute after they've failed. Then all of a sudden their phone works and you think, well, couldn't, you know, you could have phoned me yesterday. You did know about this thing yesterday. Anyway, you'll spot them anyway. You learn to spot them. So anyway, she's going to be finding another dentist for her crown, which is, you know, I don't know. Um, she didn't catch on a very good day either because somebody, somebody not a member of the association rang me about four times yesterday asking for free legal advice, including twice while I was asleep. And in the evening, you know, people think, they know I work during the day. So what they do is they ring me as soon as it's convenient for them. They get home, they make the kids tea, and then they ring me up and ask me, uh, you know, what's what. So the other characteristic is, of course, that when you know when they don't turn up and you do uh, want to contact them, you can never get through. That's because what they do is they make they make a quick phone call. 
or send you a quick text and then they turn their phone off quick quick <laughs> like, that's it I've cancelled I've cancelled and now no comebacks <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna give them the chance to come back and say actually you've got to come in so they can't get in touch with me they can't get me to come in can they no yeah we can all right <laughs> we can get you we can get you anyway Nice to talk to you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.